meant for an adult audience. Love line may contain sexually oriented content. Content. Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love line. Love line. Coast to coast. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Lisa Durgan's our guest tonight. Lisa, I pronounced everything right, right? Yeah, you did. Good times. Lisa's uh, on the uh, cover of, uh, well, it's going to be this month's stuff. It's not out yet, right? It's out now. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, Just yeah, today. Came out today. <laughs> all, the, all the guys had it out front. Yeah. The Sploozers? The Sploozers. Yeah. Part <laughs> Spaz, all loser. Sploozer. <laughs> oh, yeah. These guys at the magazine. Yeah. They're, now they're currently pulling the windshield wipers off of my car and <laughs> using, using them to actually carve Sploozer into, into my hood. That's well, nice. your car's right next to mine, so I hope they don't get my next. Yeah, yours will be uh, actually covered with a... Uh, Fine don't, coat of semen. Oh, it's true. I knew. It's true. There's a lot of guys that are into that yeah, stuff. I know. They enjoy that stuff. Uh, All right. Lisa is uh, on uh, Fox Sports Net, uh, Net's NFL show, which is uh, on Saturdays uh, after the Pac-10 show, and then on uh, Sundays at uh, 10 a.m. to uh, noon, and uh, Chris Myers, Tommy Davidson, and oh, oh, this is a new show, right? Yeah. Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan. I, I, what do you think I got the TiVo for? Yeah, now, no. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of uh, Michael Irvin. He's great. He's funny. Boy, yeah. what a story, huh? Yeah, Michael. He's come around. Uh, well, Michael, well, first off, the uh, black NFL troublemaker who ends up becoming a uh, ordained minister. Right. Not not headline news anymore. <laughs> what percentage of black men over forty are ordained ministers? Have you seen, uh, what percent? Thirty-seven. Have you? Have you <laughs> that seems like more like sixty. <laughs> have you seen his his preacher routine? Oh, listen, it's very I, I, funny. I don't. I don't think it's a routine. <laughs> no, no, Drew. but, but he, I, no, no, he does a funny version. Of I it. haven't seen it, but oh, it, it's it's incredible. He's he can charm a room, so I'm yeah. sure he's pretty good with that. He <laughs> he is, uh, yeah. He, he dresses uh, to the nines. Hey, I like that about him. No, I'm listen. No, no better guy to have uh, on your uh, NFL crew than yeah. uh, this guy. I mean, here, here's a guy who's an All Pro, has uh, a couple of Super Bowl rings, and uh, talks the talk, walks the walk. Dresses uh, like Al Sharpton, sounds like an an, an Eddie Murphy character. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm uh, I'm in love with that guy. I really am. Lisa's also the uh, new St. Pauli girl. What well, so we do posters and uh, like sign sign the calendars. And I've stuff? actually done all the work. Now I just represent them for a year. I've shot everything, and uh, you know, once a year they pick some girl that they think represents just the all American. Well, actually, it's a German beer, yeah. but you know what I mean. It's it's well, just somebody American that represents killer. Yes. fun, love, and yeah, yeah, good times. Good times. And, and you're it, now you probably like got one of the things in your in your contract where you can't be drinking like a Budweiser <laughs> or Schlitz, right? But they don't let you do that. Yeah, I'm, I I'm not sure if they mentioned Schlitz. <laughs> Maybe I'm living Pam, in the past. Schlitz, I'm not sure. Primo, Paps, <laughs> Blue Ribbon, all the big ones, all the big ones. Well, they treat me right, so I'm gonna. But there is, they have those things. I remember when Jimmy did, like uh, Miller Light. Oh yeah. He couldn't be seen holding the butt. Like if you want to go out and shoot around a golf, and forget about filming. Yeah. He wouldn't get, he'd pour it into a cup. He wouldn't right. be seen waving around the uh, Bud bottle. It's do just they, like do they my... have that? Well, I don't walk around carrying beer everywhere, but when I do drink beer, St. Pauli's are really good. But they good tell beer. you that, right? Yeah, I mean, of course. I'm so representing. That's not, that's fine. It's just like with the endorsements I have with golf. I can't be playing with some other, you know, golf ball and, and certain clubs if I'm represented by, you know, certain How names. did you go on the golf? How do I go on the how, golf? How did you get going with that? I've played my whole life. Did um, some of your family play? Or? My family, my parents, my grandparents, my dog's are, are name was from, Bogey. Are you from San Diego? Or <laughs> I no? am from San Diego, okay. so I grew up playing. Actually, my dad, my dad was in the military, so I played in a lot of military courses. And uh. um, I started coaching, having coaching lessons at 12. And my mom and I used to play twice a week. And I got really good at a young age. And... Um, so I got endorsed by a lot of things in, really? oh. from doing Playboy and golf 
really there's not too many women that play in this town and no, can play no, well. Not, not so. attractive. Not Asian women. <laughs> I kick my dad right in the nuts one more time for not taking you on the golf course. And for just not doing anything or being into nothing. I've never seen a golf club or nothing. I got thrown off a driving range, you know. How did you do that? The guy said if I sliced uh, one more into the tennis courts, <laughs> I was going to have to leave. And then he stood there while I teed it up and proceeded to uh, slice it uh, oh, no. right into the tennis court. You yep. need to close the face of your club. Yeah, you, you got to show me what's going on because yeah, uh, I, got, I got a mad, mad slice and I've been taking lessons. I mean, just sort of verbal, let, you know, yeah, open the club, close the club. You're not following through. You're <laughs> dipping your shoulder. You're not flexing your knee. And I've got an extra 20 feet of slice now. <laughs> All, I've, five years of advice and, and club modification, this and that. And, and this is a bad slice, I want you to know, because a buddy of mine who's an avid golfer said, we're going to go out to the driving range, we're going to buy a big bucket, I'm going to sit down, light a cigarette, and watch you hit that bucket, and by the time we're done with this bucket, we'll work your slice right out. And uh, when we're done with that bucket, he was like... He gave up. Yeah, I don't know, man. You know, I gotta, I, tell you? I gotta say about golf, it's just like working out, or I don't know, There's everybody seems to have the right thing to say. And, you know, I have a coach... I listen to my coach, so whenever I'm out there and somebody wants to give me a little bit of advice just being a girl, I just, you just got to nip it and say, leave it. Yeah, but you, you have a game. You don't have a crazy slice that goes in a, a, another fairway. Well, at one point I did. I was, like, slicing for a good month or two, and I couldn't figure out what I did, and I had to rechange, you know, my, my grip. Actually, yeah. it was my grip. Uh, yeah. And not closing my face, so yeah. that's why I suggested that. But look, I'm doing exactly what I said not to do. I know. But I'm, I'm left-handed, so I've, so I've been told uh, to just stop it. Oh, really? But I play golf right-handed, yeah, which is actually, right. no, you should doesn't... do that. Yeah, it's too late now. I've spent all this time sucking from the left side of the, the tee there. I, it's, I couldn't imagine going and sucking from the right side of the tee, but... You, you, you give me a little golf lesson, like, during the commercial. I just, I got to get this slice. It's it's no fun for me, you understand? I, I can't enjoy myself. I go, I play these crappy, you know, B, C celebrity tournaments, and I just slice the goddamn ball all over the place. It's pathetic. And then you're on the green in four, and you're three-putting. You, and, and you, you make everyone nervous, too, because you're an attractive woman. Let me tell you something, Drew, psychologically. I was playing uh, in a foursome on some sort of, like, Kings tournament or something, the hockey team out in, I don't know, Simi Valley. And I was playing with a couple guys who were playing pretty well and knew what they were doing, and I wasn't doing too badly. And I, I don't know if I, I think I was with Jimmy and he was doing okay. And we played like eight holes and everything was fine. And we're, we were, they were doing this like scramble thing, and we were a couple below par or something, which is easy to do if you do it that way. And, uh, but everyone was playing pretty decent golf, and then we got to the eighth hole with the hot chick who's sitting there, and she's sitting there on like a folding chair, and she's like the Budweiser girl, and she's going to give you a brewski, <laughs> and uh, you know whoever gets it closest to the pin gets a case of Budweiser or something. They do this at these celebrity tournaments. All four guys just whacked it, just <laughs> just right right into the water. Like, everybody caved completely. The idea of a hot chick sitting in a folding chair 10 feet behind you when you're teeing the ball up, everyone goes to hell. <laughs> everybody, you, you, you everybody swing, screwed you up. swing with too much force and hit it over the... All I know is, is out of the four guys on the previous eight holes, one of the four guys had a good enough tee shot to play it. You know, it was in the fairway. It was decent. It was good enough to uh, everyone play that ball. Yeah. And that's how they do it in these tournaments. No one had a playable ball. <laughs> That's bad. Yeah, and, and then I think we actually took, like, two mulligans or something, like two of the good guys hit over again. Still nothing. Oh. Yeah, everyone just sat there. They're, you know, we should just tuck their genitalia between our legs <laughs> and, and wet. You don't play, Dr. Drew? No. Dr. He's not the only doctor doesn't all. play. But, he, if, but well, if, I'm, if, I'm if you're anxious, with a beautiful yeah. woman, it sucks. You can't focus. You're I'm no getting anxious good. just talking about golf. You do? You yeah. get anxious? Uh, Why? Why? Because I, I cannot, I mean, it's really, like, retarded with a club. <laughs> and if I had four hours, it's like a billion other things I'd do at that time. And that but, that, but see, me. that's the key. The key is, is it, it forces you just to s walk around and do nothing for, <laughs> for four hours. <laughs> and that's the whole point. Yeah, like you got yourself. too much. It, it forces you to stop doing stuff. Yeah. That's a, you got too much on your plate. Yeah. Yeah. You need to chill out. But, yes, <laughs> I, I, we're going to get rid of my slice before uh, the night's over. Sarah? Yeah. You're 18? 
Yes. What's up? Um, I have this boyfriend that I've been with for about two years, a little over, and he is into um, anal sex. He wants to try it, and it makes me pretty nervous, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not something you want to do. No, not really, but I don't know. I think that he's weird pretty much. Okay, well, why would you want to... First of all, why are you with a guy that you think is weird? Well, no, just this idea that he has. Then why would you engage in something with him that you thought was weird and unpleasant and you don't want to do it? No, what I'm asking you is, is it normal? Is it... It's common right now. Guys kind of preoccupy about this. <laughs> it's a I, trend. It's it is like, kind you know, of a trend. Like when we were, we were young, uh, certain dance steps were... Uh, Inline skates. Electric slide. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Skating. Yeah, pit bull attacks. It, it, certain things uh, become in vogue for a while. And then right now, it's the, uh, these are the anal years. The keister years. The keister years, yeah. I think, when we look back on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a suggestion. Yeah. Don't do anything you don't want to do. And oh, if you're yeah. not comfortable, don't do it. And he should respect that. Well, yeah, and he does. I'm just wondering if it's a normal thing or if... It's a pretty common thing these days. It is? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. You, uh, I, no, I'm, I'm not reached a consensus. Adam has his theory of why, but I, I can't quite. I can't quite get it. Why what? Why guys are sort of into this now? Guys are into it because guys are envelope pushers. You, you said <laughs> I mean, the, the list. No, envelope's a euphemism for the ass. I see. I there. No, no, got that it. wasn't got a metaphor. No, I, was, I was actually talking about the ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You no, never I heard it called the Manila envelope. Got it. Envelope. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Here's here's what it is. Uh, you, you take a look at anything. Take, okay, guys push everything along. You see, you, you take a look at, like, uh, BMX riding right. uh, 10 years ago. Guys were doing a cross-up. Now yeah. they're doing double flips and yeah. stuff. You know, everything has to keep going forward. Take a look at the NBA. Barely saw any dunking 25 years ago. Now everything's crazy. Like, stuff you couldn't imagine is going on in... And, and it's guys shoving this along. It's a physical thing that guys got to push along. Guys got to push sex along, too, if you think about it. Yeah, so I mean, think about what was <coughs> acceptable and what was exciting, what you were happy to have in high school as opposed to what the average high schooler is into now. Do you see what I'm saying? So when I see a half pipe or whoop -dees, I should think envelope. A think <laughs> anal envelope. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Okay, taking notes. You say envelope, I say envelope. Envelope, envelope. Okay. Envelope. Envelope? Mm-hmm. How do you spell that? It's E-N, right? Yeah, yeah. It's envelope. It sounds like envelope to me. <laughs> all right. That's why the dictionary sits here, Adam. It's all right. Well, like, probably both ways in here. E-N. Both ways. You're all right. You're okay. But, like... It's all right, Adam. Okay. All right, here we go. But... How do you say the word envy? Envy? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh oh uh, uh, in, you know, in, Brian makes a in, point. In, he, he writes, uh, he writes uh, on, entourage, entourage, which is uh, not Interestingly, in, uh, it's envelope. It's envelope. No, 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 I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. It's envelope in the dictionary. Yeah, because everybody pushes the envelope. They don't push <laughs> the envelope. There's no, there's no test pilot that's going to push the envelope. No. Jeez, the envelope isn't even in the dictionary. Oh, yes, it is. No, it is. Both are in here. Yeah, right. They're both right. All right, look up, uh, l look up uh, Labia and Labia next. Jade? Yeah? You're 17? Mm-hmm. Or uh, what's, my, what's my grandmother say? Uh, clitoris. Uh, clitoris and clitoris. Go ahead, Grandma. Jade. It's wait, my, wait. Phil, Phil. My Please, grandmother yeah. corrects me. She's like, it's not clitoris, it's clitoris. She's 85? 89. 89. You had this conversation with your mother? I mean, grandmother. your grandmother? Yeah, but to be fair to her, she was 85 when we had this. I was listening to the radio show, and I heard you say clitoris. <laughs> it's pronounced clitoris. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, well, <laughs> we always say clitoris. Clitoris. And, I mean, clitoris. And she's like, you say she, clitoris? she's like, uh, Emery Kennerick is a doctor, and he says clitoris. I like what this. You know, when you get old, you have one friend with a degree, and they become Mr. Owl. Mm -hmm. i got to listen to this old coot about everything now. Emery Kennerick says, like every sentence starts with that because the guy read a book. And I said, well, what do you think Dr. Drew is? He's a doctor. But see, you, you don't count because you're one of my friend right. doctors. Well, of course. Like I'm you're some jack off I went to right. junior college right. with. Right. All right, so it, but it is it's clitoris or clitoris. Yeah, the, the, 
Yeah, thank you. We, we, by the way, weren't trying to figure that one out. Oh, we weren't. <laughs> we weren't. We weren't. Lisa didn't. I thought she asked that. <laughs> no, I didn't ask. Jade? Yeah? You're 17? Mm -hmm. What's up? Um, I was just curious. I'm, I guess you would say, a habitual pot smoker. I've been smoking for about two years straight now. And in the past month, I've been having some strange dreams where they involve me doing harder drugs like coke and heroin. Have you done those drugs? Well, I've done coke, which was laced in the weed, but that was all. Get a little, uh, the, the, the coke was uh, sprinkled on the weed? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me. Hey, Jake, Jake, speak up a little bit. Get closer to the telephone there. You're not really registering here. Oh, okay. There you go. Better? Much better. Much better. Okay. We hear her, but it wasn't broadcasting. I see. All right. Um, well, here's the deal. What, what happens with marijuana addiction in essentially all cases, it's somewhere along the way the pot stops working. Mm -hmm. Is it still working for you? It is. I just did like 20 minutes ago, and it's fine. <laughs> but is it still, is it still <laughs> like, like it was when you first fell in love with it? Not. Quite. I have to do a little bit more. Yeah, so and I, it's it, the effect starts fading over time, and that effect can be a year or it can be twenty years, and this, yeah. we don't know why it's so variable in different people. But when it stops working so well for you, people start thinking about looking for other solutions because mm -hmm. the pot was really just a solution in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. Now, for how you were feeling, or God knows what was going on in your life, you, you found the solution. It was great and made everything okay, and now it's not working so well anymore. Yeah. So it's a natural part of the progression, part of the process in the addiction with this drug. So, what do you think? Well, lately, like, um, because it hasn't been working as well, yeah. I take breaks and, um... Well, let's keep taking longer breaks. Yeah, because it, it, it was a... I'd done it for about two and a half weeks. You, you may also be having a lot of... Cra you, you'll have using dreams about pot, too, and uh, maybe the reason it's sort of bleeding into other drugs because your, your perception of pot right now is it's not going to work. Yeah. 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 17. Well, if you can't stop... If you're stop, thinking about not doing it, then you should not Yeah, there's MA out there. You can get, get a 12-step program going. You'll be fine. Mm, all right. Let's talk to Nadine, who is 19. Nadine? Hello? What's up? Hi. Okay. Um, the thing is... <laughs> okay, I'm kind of shy about saying this. Um, I like rough sex and everything. And me and my Did you say rough sex? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, uh, we've been doing it for like a year and a half now. Mm. And um, the thing is now that in the middle of when I'm going to have an orgasm, like my lower abdomen starts hurting a little, but I still keep doing it and everything. But I was just wondering if that's normal or is there something wrong? Or anything else going on? You've been having abnormal periods or discharge or anything? No. Pain with intercourse otherwise? So what? You've been hurt. Has it been hurting at any other point during your sexual relationship? Anything else makes it hurt? Uh, no, just straight there. Just right at the end. There. I don't know. Well, what are you guys doing for contraception? Oh, uh, well, we used to use condoms, but... You I used to use condoms? Yeah. And... I don't use anything. So you're going to get pregnant? No, no. How are you not going to get pregnant? Because right now I'm on my period, so... That doesn't matter. But you, you you're having sex on your period? Oh, no, no, but not right now. Like, when I don't have it and, you know, it just hurts when... Hey, stay with us here. How, how are you not going to get pregnant? Well, I'm not doing it during... Uh, when I have my period or anything, I don't do that. How? But it doesn't matter when you do it. I, I never gotten pregnant before. Okay, well, that's... Like, it, when... You're going to get pregnant, all right? How, how do you think you're going to avoid it? Hold on a second. I, I really think some of our callers were like... Um, they're like frozen when the, when the ice age hit. We thawed them out, and they're just like they're like natives. For primitive man, yeah. They're primitive man. Yeah. I I never I never got pregnant before because I won't get pregnant because I've never been pregnant before. Crow fly from right, moon comes yeah. from the sky. He, no uh, pregnant. Yeah, and if I do get pregnant, all we gotta do is sacrifice a uh, goat or okay. something, <laughs> throw it in a volcano. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the baby will go away. Jesus Christ, Nadine. Uh-huh. All right, stay with us here, please. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, you're not using any birth control. Right. Right. And so eventually, you're going to get pregnant. And you may not, it may not be when you're planning on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. How are you going to avoid it? Or how is it, how could that not Hold happen? on, let me answer. I'm on my period now. <laughs> yeah. How are you going to avoid getting pregnant? Well, I 
I do want to start taking some birth control pills, but... All right, in the meantime, uh, he's got to wear a condom, right? Yeah. Uh, Nad Nadine, listen to me. I can tell by your cadence mm -hmm. uh, and your tone that you're a prime candidate for cranking out a couple of kids uh, before your 21st birthday. She could be pregnant right now. You I could be pregnant. That, that's what I'm sort of going to build to here is that this, she, you could be pregnant. The bleeding could be first trimester pregnancy. You could have an infection. This could be a lot of different things, this pain you're having. It could be nothing. But you've really not been taking proper care of yourself. You, really, you also should be getting regular pap smears since you are sexually active. Your risk for cervical cancer is high. I'm going uh, to make a guess here. Nadine? Uh huh. Who's uh? What's the age of your oldest brother or sister? Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's twenty. And she's your, twenty. And your mom is forty. No, she's thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Good time. There you go. Pregnant at sixteen. Yeah. So there you go. All right, Nadine. Enough uh -huh. said. All right, baby. Let's try to break that cycle, Nadine. Pay attention. All right. Okay. You've done pretty good. I mean, you've crushed your mom's previous record of 16 and a half. <laughs> Made it all the way to 19. Probably with mom all the way, I mean, just on her, I'm sure. Right. Too. Don't yeah. do what I did. Where's the, How many brothers and sisters you have? Four. I have two. Two sisters. All right. So there's no three brothers? Of you. No, no brothers. All right. They're locked. They're not they're locked, locked down. Yeah. I don't like to talk about them. All right, Nadine. Uh-huh. Take care of yourself, baby. And uh, listen. You get a pelvic it. exam. You're, you're, you're an adult now. you got to get the pelvic exam, get on the birth control, do all that good stuff, right? Birth control. Yeah, I, I, I have an appointment for the 23rd. There you go. I don't, wanted to do it already. All right, don't worry in the meantime, but make sure he wears a condom in the meantime. Got to put that Christmas stocking over his dork. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Fill it with Santa's special eggnog. Lisa Durgan is our guest tonight. She's uh, currently on the uh, cover of uh, Stuff, and uh, you can uh, find her with the uh, Reverend Michael Irvin. Uh. <laughs> I actually just anchored, uh, just got off the air an hour ago, so it's not just the weekends. It's no. the news updates on Fox. All right. Just so uh, it's all the time. You turn on the Fox Sports Net, and uh, you, uh, you find her. All right. <laughs> Let's uh, take a uh, quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> L-O-V-E-191. Lisa Durgan is our guest tonight. Never uh, never fails. Whenever I look up on the uh, list to find out uh, who's coming up on the show, the guest will always look and want to know what I'm looking at up there. <laughs> and I, I must have a powerful, powerful gaze because... Because I looked. It's not a big move, you know. I'm, just, no, no. I'm looking up and I'm it, reading it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me reading? Yeah. yeah. Smell oil burning when I read? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It's like, Usually it's I got to put my finger up. out and move it along. Like when, Even when I read a billboard from my car, yeah. I have to stick my finger out the window, <laughs> drag it along. Miller. La, 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 mil, mil, Miller Light. And yeah, my finger, and people are honking because the signal took <laughs> Just a <laughs> dot. Oh, no. <laughs> Pal, pull, girl spelled with an I. What happened to the U? Yeah, and I have to, I have to actually move my finger. It's great. Like, this is the biggest. This is why, this, is why uh, this TiVo is a curse, actually, because I, 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 have to, I can't read subtitles fast enough. Like, I can't stay up with stuff. So I hit the TiVo. But the TiVo has a little thing at the bottom, a little icon Green that goes strip, across, yeah. and it covers, yes. ironically, the thing that I'm trying to read. And As God of Night TiVo is dangerous. I, I want TiVo in life all the time now. Uh-huh. So, hey, I didn't catch that. Let's, let's roll it It back. is so popular now. Yeah. Yeah. The, the greatest part is really it, it settles arguments. Yeah. Yeah, you <laughs> sit there and you watch TV and you go, did you see the boom mic? Yeah. And the person next to you goes, no, no boom bike. And you go, oh, yeah, yeah, popped in, oh, yeah. popped in. Uh, I didn't see anything. You go, oh, yeah. And then you rewind it. You've got too much time on your hands, yeah, let yeah. me tell you. Yeah, baby. You, it's not all I got on my hands. Yeah, that's right. All right. Lisa is uh, currently uh, on the cover of uh, this month's stuff, which is uh, out today. It's the uh, NFL's uh, sexy sportscaster. Well, that's kind of nice, because there are some pretty sexy uh, NFL sportscasters these days. I mean, it seems like in the last 
Yeah, it's been been happening over the last year or so, but it seems like it's heated up quite a bit, even more so recently. Yes? Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's my interview. Rick? Yes. You're 41? Yes? Yes? Yes. Okay. Let's move on. <sighs> come on, come on. No, all right. Go ahead, Rick. Yeah, Adam, uh, Dr. Drew, love your show. Thank you. Uh, got a bit of a problem. I got a, uh, had a major life change a couple of years ago, getting ready to retire from the service, and uh, the wife decided she didn't want no more and left me, and I've moved on with my life. And uh, Kids? Did you have kids? Uh, excuse me? Did you guys have kids? Uh, no, we didn't have any kids. She had uh, stepkids and uh, raised them. I stay in contact with them every now and then, see how they're doing. And, uh, you know, got me a job uh, driving a big truck and bought me a motorcycle and pretty pretty well happy with my life right now. And uh, now all of a sudden she's wanting to get back in my life, and uh, I really don't want to. Mm -hmm. I don't think I do. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm seeing a 22-year-old girl right now. Yeah. And it's a weekend thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so what's the problem? Why is there a question here? Well, there's certain aspects I, I miss. Like what? Um, well, you know, the you know having someone there all the time, someone I can talk to at yeah. my age level. The the twenty two year old just you know. Yeah, but does it have to be this woman? Uh, your, well, your your wife is sort of a there's sort of a pattern emerging here. She has one failed marriage, now another failed marriage. Sounds like a certain amount of chaos. Is she, was she uh, like she she strikes me as someone that really has like abandonment issues, right? If you weren't around well, all the yeah, time. Her, her, wasn't her, her first marriage wasn't a failed marriage. He uh, I guess he committed suicide. Oh, all right. And, That's a deal. You know we were we were married for almost ten years, and you know I'd done everything I was, I was supposed to do. You know, we got the house. You know. well, why did she leave then? She met some guy on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, see, that, that's, yeah, that's, that's disturbing. Chaos. Yeah, that's disturbing. And let me translate uh, someone I can talk to on my level with the 22-year-olds. Yeah. Yeah, Fog like, Hat was the greatest rock band that ever existed. Who's Fog Hat? Oh, Christ. <laughs> Who is Fog Hat? <laughs> see? Oh. Christ. No, see, that, right. that's the problem. That's but problem. Rick. She, she, let, let me, yeah, let me. Let's have, she, doesn't know, she doesn't know the bands, right? Yeah, Rick, yeah, but, that's but a problem. The, the suicide husband. Wait, 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 wait. I know they're not talking about anything else. The, the husband that committed suicide was were drugs and alcohol involved with that? Uh, I believe there was. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, you see, you okay, see the All right. Please. Yeah. Ninety-nine percent of people that commit suicide, there's drugs and alcohol. No, involved. no, no. I'm I forget that. I'm just trying to. The pattern with this woman is she has to have the chaos, and Rick was probably a little too stable, in fact. Yeah. Because she has to get go on the internet, find some other yes, chaotic. Yes. Yes. Yep. Rick, don't you got your eighteen wheels? <laughs> you got yeah. your you got your hog. You got your twenty two year old who doesn't yeah. uh, know of uh, <laughs> any bands uh, before Nirvana. You're in great yeah. shape. All yeah. right, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go back. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah. It's interesting. That pathology is pulling him back. You know, yeah. That's his stuff. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. She's crazy, and Rick's just a little too sane for her. Yeah. Carly. Yeah. You're seventeen. Yes. What's up? Um. I think I'm neurotic. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, all right. Like, I'm, I've been with my boyfriend, actually. It'll be eight months on, um, it's, we're coming up on eight months, actually. Mm -hmm. And we've broken up twice, but, I mean, that has nothing to do with it. Like, I'm totally in love with him. He's 17, too. Right. Everything will be fine for, you know, a couple of months, and then, like, We'll be talking on the phone or whatever, and he's like, well, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. For instance, it actually happened tonight. Carly? Yeah. I'm going to ask you to jump ahead and get to the question, and then we'll decide on the fill we need here. I'd like her to actually move past the question into the end of the call. <laughs> Could you do that, Carly? I was... I was Present for that, but no. Carl, I'll tell you what, we'll pick it up from thanks. You guys are great. You help a lot. I'm a huge fan of the show. No, no, no please. Oh. Well, but what is the no. question? What is where are you going with this? What, what is the question, Carly? Yes. What what is the question? Where are we going? So we can sort of figure out what we need. What can I do instead of like freaking out? And what makes you freak out? Um, that's the problem. I don't know. What do you describe freaking out? Um, hyperventilating, crying. So you have, you have sort of you have panic attacks. Yeah. And it's when you talk to your boyfriend. No, not all the time. Is it when you talk to your boyfriend? No. Sometimes, yeah. Okay, so is it when you're with him in his presence? 
No. Is he far away or something? No, he lives um, five miles. No, away. you you just you get to a certain point in the relationship and you start getting wiggy. Yeah, but she's having full-blown panic attacks, and sometimes panic attacks is hard to tell what's triggering them. Can you okay, know? I'm on medication for depression. All right. What medicine? Zoloft. Okay. And were you having panic and anxiety as part of your depression? Um, no, I was just suicidal. Okay. It may just be your... Well, it's more complicated than you think. You should expect better symptom control than you're having. So Zoloft may not be the right medication for you. Good to antidepressant may not be right for you given your symptoms. So you got to talk to your doctor about that. Secondly, something's going on with you sort of emotionally, and some therapy would really do you a lot of good. You're in treatment. Why not keep going with this? Nowhere does our stuff come out more than in our interpersonal experiences, our relationships. That's when stuff Oh, yeah. Heard. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's something emerging here. And I, I wouldn't have time to... I, I, again, again, I get a flavor. There's an abandonment thing going on here. It's like he's away and she can't control it. And she freaks out. Mm -hmm. And she's gonna, what she's going to end up doing is pushing him away. And, and as a way of... As opposed to being helpless and having someone abandon you, people prefer to actually make the abandonment happen right. as, as a more comfortable way of... Being in control of a situation. Oh, yeah. relationship. People always seem to figure out a way to do that self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. They create the scenario they they fear so they much. They fear most because they, when they when they create it themselves, at least they're not helpless. They're not powerless against it. Or maybe she just likes the drama. She, Some girls are like that. She may be, but that would be more about her creating drama, not just panicking and you know, all the time. Yeah, not panic, not the cold sweats, David. <laughs> yeah. Gonna have to get some help with that slice uh, pretty soon. By the way, Lisa, David. Okay. Hello? You're 14. Yeah. What is going on? Well, uh, there's this girl that I like, and she's kind of a freak girl. And uh, I was trying to think of something I might be able to get her for Christmas, mm -hmm. but I wasn't sure exactly what I might be able to get her. What's a freak girl? Well, uh, she's kind of like gothic. She's on a bunch of antidepressants, and she goes to like three different psychiatrists a week. Mm hmm And uh, does she know who you are? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> and does she like you? Yes. I'm not sure. Do you think she's going to get you a present? Because it's, it's weird when you get someone a present, like at school, and they don't get you a present. Makes them uncomfortable. It actually doesn't bother me that much. All right, so you'd be all right if she didn't get you a present back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who is this, Vinnie Barbarino? No, no, you're supposed to say, no. <laughs> anyway. Are you on the treadmill? No. No, this, he's just, ha he's just he's nervous. Just, he's having labor. It's, it's a Quasimodo. What is going on out you there? Ringing, you ringing the, <laughs> the bell, Quasimodo? Ding, ding. What's up? Listen, turn the radio down, humpback, would you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what what should he get us, yeah, girl? Mr. Carter. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, well, let's see. What do you get the girl who has nothing? Black fingernail polish. Black fingernail polish there is you go. nice. Yeah. Uh, just a black I'm sharpie. A dark is nice. <laughs> you get a little variety in the in the, the you get some dark purple lipsticks and dark purple. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, goth polish. folks like uh, taxidermy too. Like pick up like a stuffed squirrel or beaver. Ew. Yeah, but it, it needs to be like a. It's got to be doing something. Uh, like it needs the, to be an exotic. It has like an executioner's hood yeah, on it right, or something. Right, 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 right. That's nice when they take uh, animals and they put them in human-like jobs. You know, you take a little squirrel and put some suspenders on him. <laughs> David? Yeah. I'll tell you what I would do if I were you. David? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, uh, I was Kabuki just hoping you go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, I think what you should do is you, should, is you have a thrift store by your house. There's about probably three or four. Three or four. I say you walk into those places and you just sort of walk up and down until something jumps out at you. Good times. You know what I mean? She'll appreciate some, the some effort. Some will speak to you because a goth chick is not going to want something from uh, Kmart. She's right. going to want something that's used, yeah. something that could tell a story as, as only an abalone ashtray could. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? She's probably Wiccan, too. Ooh, Wiccan. Is she? If she's Wiccan, you're going to want to get her some Slim Fast. Is she Wiccan? <laughs> yeah, because they're all fat, those Wiccans. Is she, she Wiccan also? Yeah. Uh, How did I know that? Big gal? No, not really. Little chunky though, right? No, the the, the Wiccan goth mix is not necessarily the. She's a, she's got a, she got some ass on her though, right, David? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and what is she? Fourteen? No, she's sixteen. Sixteen. Oh, all uh, right. She check back with that Wiccan at that uh, twenty-eight. See, uh, let's say three bells plus. <laughs> 
happen. But I mean, let's face it, you're uh, you're 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 chunky Wiccan. I mean, you got a little ass on you at 16 as a Wiccan. You're uh, you're uh, you're heading toward uh, so he could go get her some some natural herb or some herb garden or something. Yeah, something from nature. Yeah, Lisa, there you go. Lisa Durgan is our guest tonight. She's uh, on the cover of uh, this month's uh, Stuff magazine. Also on uh, Fox Sports Nets NFL show. We will uh, take ourselves a uh, quick break, and we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Lisa Durgan is our guest tonight. Lisa is currently on the uh, cover of this month's Stuff magazine. You'll uh, recognize her because she's the only one who's on the cover. <laughs> she's in a uh, hot pink bikini. She's uh, just climbing out of a swimming pool. And, uh, Just the thing for these winter months, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Looking uh, very fetching. <laughs> hair's, hair's moist, but not wet. Mm. It's just the way I like my women, Drew. <laughs> uh, Lisa's an uh, avid golfer. She's the uh, new St. Polly girl, or has been for a little while, an uh, ex-playmate. Or are you always a playmate? Once a playmate, always a playmate. So. Right. It's like a Vietnam veteran. You know, you're not an ex-Vietnam veteran. Right. You're just a right. Vietnam veteran, yeah. Vietnam veteran and uh, also on uh, Fox Sports Net's uh, NFL show. All right. Sunday's uh, 10 a.m. to do. Ready to go? It's actually Saturday night. It repeats on Sunday oh, night. Oh, okay. Saturday's uh, after the Pac-10 game. Well, it's a Saturday exactly. after I cover the a lot of college football and stuff, but then my uh, updates are in the NFL show with all the boys. Yeah, you got uh, Chris Myers, uh, Tommy Davidson, and Michael Irvin. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy Davidson is the uh, Pazone man. He's crazy. Pizone? He's crazy, that man. I'll tell you, he's crazy. Huh. All right. Let's uh, talk to uh, Jay, who's uh, 22. Jay? Hi. What's up? Hello? What's up? Hey, um, okay, to the best of my knowledge, um, I believe that my friend can't decide whether he's gay or not. What does that mean? And, um, does I think he's... What's, what's happening with him? Describe to us what's happening. I think he's, he's struggling with his own emotions, and he can't decide. What have you seen? Is he talking to you about this? What, what is the evidence? Um, he hasn't said anything directly, but he's, he's 22, he's my age, and, uh, his whole life, he's never had a girlfriend. Yeah. But he's talked about girls, and he said, you know, that he's had crushes on girls and things like that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I see him watch TV, and he's interested in, you know, pretty girls on TV and things like that. Yeah. But uh, he also goes to school in downtown Chicago, and he has a lot of gay friends down there. And he writes for a gay newspaper. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And... Uh, also, he has a he has a a group Hold of. Hold on a well, second. He, uh, writing for a gay newspaper is like having writing having a column in a black newspaper or something like. You got to be black, right? I would think. I know they don't have black newspapers because uh, magazines. Yeah, they're black magazines. They got black newspapers. They got black newspapers. Yeah, yeah. yeah the fro. <laughs> 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 the, the Chicago pick. They must have. They must have some. They must have some. Be that as it may. Yeah. Uh, be that as it may, he has to be gay if he's writing for a gay newspaper. You got. You, you got to like blow the editor to get on the staff. That's what they mean by staff. You see <laughs> what I'm saying, Jay? Yeah. 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 You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Got Peter Lord. It's Punk Square. Yeah. Yeah. He's blowing guys. Yeah. Uh, Jay. Yeah. H have you brought this up with him? No, I haven't. But. Um... Are you gay? No, I'm not. I'm yeah. married to a woman. And he's been a good friend of yours for a long time? Yeah, he's been my friend since grade school. Mm -hmm. and, okay. Um, well, look, is it a big deal to you? Do you care? No, I don't. My question is, is like, I don't think he's comfortable with anyone else knowing what he's going through. So I want to know how I can try and tell him that I support him completely. All right. I would uh, go ahead, Lisa. What tell do you him think? to listen to what you're doing right now. You're calling on behalf of him. Yeah, but That's it's too late because by the time he hangs up the phone and calls him, <laughs> he, he'll be off the phone. I I think if you don't want to corner the guy and make him feel uncomfortable. He's got to just let it go and let, it, but, let but, this guy in his own people, way. You him. can let people know how you feel about certain subjects by how you react to just sort of what's going on around you. Oh, yeah. Bring up something that's in the gay magazine that he's writing for. 
Yeah. And you have a chance to, you know, express yourself better. Yeah. Felching friend or foe. Uh. You probably just wrote a, a hard-hitting expose on that. You can get into the nuances. I just learned that. what that word meant. And that's nice. that's a doozy. Nice. <laughs> I see that as the as the headline, right? That's front page. Three F. <laughs> you see the gay editor at the uh, at the gay newspaper he's working for. He's got the he's got the felching friend or foe <laughs> over there, versus. Uh, Versus uh, the uh, there's a champ controversy that the champs have been causing rashes and a lot of guys. <laughs> then uh, then the squeegeeing of the loose site uh, oh, yeah. shower doors yeah. is also in there. And there's oh boy, this guy's got a full plate, full plate. No, you let him know. Like like if 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 you want to let you you can like you know where your friends are sort of politically. Like, like you're sitting around and they're going, they've legalized gay marriage in Hawaii. And you go, those fags. <laughs> Someone ought to blow that island up. Yeah, well, you I get a pretty good to. idea. Yeah, if you said, oh, that's great. It's too, it's too bad more states don't do that. Right. Yeah. He's going to feel more comfortable. And you, you give him an open an opportunity. He's like, hey, it must be tough to have to hide things like yeah. that. See if, he, see if he goes for the bait. But Jay might think he's wrong and he doesn't want to offend him, right? Yeah, I put him on hold. Oh, okay. Because he's not as exciting as we are, but... Hey, you're friends. You should be able to... He's not. He's, he's not a girlfriend. He's worth getting back. Yeah. yeah, it's really <laughs> obvious. Yeah. <laughs> Some guys are in denial about it, though. It's not they're in denial. It's that they try to be straight. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to be gay. It's painful for them to come to terms with that. So they keep trying to make it straight. All right. I know guys like that. Steven? You ever date a guy like that? No. No. You... You, you could turn a gay man <laughs> Yes? Well, I wouldn't know yes. because I haven't dated a gay man. Well, you don't know because you <laughs> turned him straight. <laughs> That's what I'm so. saying. Steven? Steven. Caller who goes by Steven. All right. Uh, bye. Let's move on to Anna. Anna? Hello? 17? Yeah. What's up? Well, I don't really have a question. I just need a little bit of advice. All righty. Uh -huh. Okay, I was going out with this boy, not boy, but, you know, my boyfriend for 11 months, and I, mo I recently moved away from him, like, mm -hmm. about two weeks ago, and he calls me all the time, and he always he's always asking me what I'm doing, where I'm at, you know, and it seems like he don't trust me, and I always ask him, do you trust me? And he always says, yes, but it just doesn't seem like it. How old is he? He's also 17. Yeah. And... Well, that accent, she could not have moved too far from Michigan. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, we still live in Michigan. Right. All right. But I just moved out of city. You're in the UP somewhere? No, I'm in the oh. um, lower peninsula. Okay. All right. The UP is the upper peninsula? Yeah. yeah. He's feeling vulnerable. Every 17-year-old guy does this. Even if you're in his presence, he's, he's like this. Yeah, but it's making me feel uncomfortable. And now I've seen someone in the past. Oh. That I haven't seen in like two years. Oh, starting to have feelings. So he's picking up on this. Mm-hmm. Well, You're he setting the vibe. Know that I've I only seen him once, and he doesn't know about it. Well, what do you, what do you mean you only seen him once? Well, I mean, okay, I knew him in the past. He was like my old like. I guess stoner buddy or whatever. Listen, if I raised kids in Michigan, by the way, I would hire like a Julie Andrews type to come over every day <laughs> and, speaking. and give everyone diction <laughs> lessons. So everything didn't sound like a gold bond commercial. Go ahead, Anna. I'm sorry. Anyways, um, like we haven't seen each other in like a year and a half or whatever, something like that. Mm -hmm. And he came over at it like at a, at a surprise and... Like, we used to, like, have an old fling, and my feelings are starting to turn, and I'm just getting really confused. How long, your feelings yeah, how long are you going to be away from your current boyfriend? Um, Forever? I, For how long? For a while. How long? I don't know. Um, at least a year. Yeah. You know what the reality is, Anna? Yeah. Seventeen-year-old relationships don't really survive that. No, mm -hmm. and a, a year is eternity. I mean, I mean re what would a year be? I mean, it's, What's it's one real, seventeenth it's, of our life now? Right, right. Forty, forty years. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I mean, a year, a year really is uh, a lifetime to a seventeen-year-old. Mm -hmm. Impossible. It, it really, it's what it really is is about one sixth of their adult life. Right. Or one fifth even. All right. They've only been pre-postpubertal for seven, eight years, six, seven years. My head's swimming now, buddy. You're, you're I think you're also sending off a message and. Are you picking up on? Yeah. It? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you saw the guy once. It's going on in your head. 
All right, so we say uh, you're 17. You're not going to see your, your boyfriend for a year. He's probably got the right idea. Yeah. Don't, don't cling on to it. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's painful, but that's reality. Yeah, and, and everybody, if you're thinking about getting out of a relationship and a person comes up to you and goes, are you thinking about getting out of a relationship? Don't go, no, 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 no. Yeah. Maybe go, yeah, I am thinking about it. Because why do you want to talk them out of something that you're thinking about? All right. Yep. Lisa Durgan is our guest tonight on the cover of uh, this week, I should say, this today. month's uh, Stuff Magazine out today. We'll be right back. Dr. Drew, Lisa Durgan is our guest tonight. Lisa is uh, currently on the cover of this month's Stuff magazine. She's the uh, super fox in the uh, hot pink bikini that was climbing out of a pool. Where'd you shoot this? Downtown. Los oh. Angeles uh, LA Athletic Club. Mm. You ever been there? No. Is it nice? It's very nice. It's right in the heart of downtown. It's crazy down there. All the executives go uh, down there and work out? <laughs> yeah. They offered me a membership, but that's kind of far to drive for me, so. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. They're just going to throw you on? <laughs> They're just grottos, right? Just for free? Really? Yeah, it's part of the... See, I'm sure here's they'd the offer thing. that to you no, if they you were in a bikini and a uh, oh, <laughs> they, they would have me escorted out of the building. Here's the thing about business. You know, if, if, if there's a hot blonde and she's around... It, it's good for her to come around the club. You, you know what I mean? Uh. It, it doesn't hurt anything. Whatever money they lose on your free membership is worth whatever they gain by, you All know, guys it, that it, giving a tour to a couple of executives from the uh, 18th floor and you come uh, walking by in a unitard. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Smart. Uh, yeah. Very smart. Very sharp business. Yeah. Good looking chick can always get a job. Like, like worst case scenario, hostess. Right? There always is a beautiful girl. Yeah, always room. You, you go to a decent restaurant, get a get a hostess gig. That's that's that, that's the worst you can do as a hot chick. Hmm. Yes. Hmm? You mm -hmm. should want to do more though. You should. You should. You should. But I mean, good-looking guy, his first job, carpet cleaning. <laughs> you see, what I'm saying, not me, but actually, yeah. I had attractive friends. That good-looking guy doesn't really get you anywhere at 19. D ditch digging. Yeah, it's like. They, well, then that might maybe it works against you a little bit because other guys sort of don't trust you a little bit. No, yeah. no, it's guys not that. It's just that? you just, just suck on no, some helium or something. What was I that? I just like <laughs> sucked on something. I don't know. But no, here's what I'm saying. Good-looking guy, sort of neither here nor there. <clears throat> might work wise. Yeah, I, when I was digging ditches, there was like a four foot tall, forty year old, morbidly obese El Salvadorian guys next to buffed out nineteen year old good-looking guys. <laughs> No difference. Right. They were in the hole, too. Mike? I was talking about me when I was talking about 19-year-old uh, buffed out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mike, you're uh, 27. Mike. What's happening tonight, huh? I don't know. We were having some uh, line problems. Let's talk to uh, Elliot, who's 22. Elliot? Hi, Adam. Dr. Drew, how are you? Lisa, yeah. how's it going? Hi. Um, well, I don't really have a problem so much as I need a little advice. Um, 22... I've uh, never been in a relationship before. I'm a virgin still. And I have like a fear of uh, rejection, mm. basically. Uh, like it's an overwhelming fear, pretty much like paralyzing at this point. Is it fear of intimacy or fear of abandonment? I mean, what do you mean fear of reject rejection? Like fear of vulnerability? Head. I've had crushes, you know, on girls before, and I just can't do anything. Like I have a crush on one of my coworkers currently, and I just like can't do anything about it. Do you where, have, where do you work? Um, I work in my school. I'm not going to say my school, but um, in an office there. And she uh, works. Work. She's not a teacher. She works in no, 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 administration. No, she she's a student also. You're a student. Oh, oh I see. You're a student. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm still in school. Yeah. But it's like just this fear where I can't, like, I can't do anything. I'll talk about it with my friends. I'll be like, you know, I like this girl. She's so great, blah, blah. And I just can't, like, say anything to her because, like, it's one of those things where if I don't see the signs that she likes me, Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it because I think I'll be rejected. What's interesting is that I think every 14-year-old male goes through this. <laughs> and, no, no, really. And somehow you got stuck in that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Remember this? 14 can go through it, but 16 and 17 but, can, too. But 22, well, you got stuck there. Not somewhere. usually 22. I never really developed my social skills because I didn't go to high school. Okay, what happened? Um, it was this big thing with my mother, and but 
I did get into college, but no, I never no. went tell, to... What's, what's the big thing? What does that mean? No, no, it was just like a thing where I wanted to go to a certain place, and my mother didn't want me to go there, and she put me in another school, and I really hated it there, so I just dropped out. And eventually she convinced me to go to college. I went to college and, like, pretty much got myself together, but... What were you doing while you were dropped out of high school? Nothing. I was at home just pretty much... Depressed? Yeah, actually I was. Um, at certain points, I... I threatened to kill myself a couple times, but I... Were you hospitalized? No, never. I went to see a few psychologists, um, but basically college turned my life around. It gave me a purpose again, but I never got to that stage. All right, same so with me, except you got to substitute college for porn. <laughs> porn turned your life around? Exactly. How? It gave me purpose. Oh, I see. I see. And, and an education the same I time. can't kill myself yeah. in this world filled with porn. I, I get it. I can't leave all this. Uh, um, you know, I think you ought to think of your... You ought to be a little easier on yourself, Elliot. I think you ought to think of yourself as someone that was, like, in a coma for several years or sick. And, and so you sort of... You, your growth was, let's use a, a harsh word, like retarded. It was slowed down. You didn't, you didn't get the normal opportunities for growth and development that somebody who's actively engaged in their life would. And you were sort of sick. You were out of it. You were pulled out for a while. And now it's time to re-engage and to, to challenge yourself and to take on, develop some of those skills. Mm -hmm. But to realize uh, y you can't go for the brass ring each time. You know, don't just go for people you're really, really interested in. Try to just explore, get some skill going, asking people out, dating a little bit, just hanging out at social And events. you like college. I mean, you're in a safe environment if you just surround yourself with friends and maybe she's in, in the group of people you're with and right. it's more safe and... But don't, but don't be, you, you, to me, you, you seem like you have a lot of uh, shame in all this. And just give yourself a break. Yeah. yeah I'm just going to say something, but forget it. Yeah, I, I'd like to do a study on why is it some guys can't sort of pull the trigger with girls and other guys seem to have no difficulty with that. I assume it's about confidence and some of it is just... All right, there's two, there's two factors here. Some of it is that's just the way you are. Some people are shy. Some people are right. outgoing. That's right. But I also suspect it's the way your parents make you feel at home. Do you feel uh, worthy? Do you feel confident? I some mean, do you feel yeah. smart? Some, some of it is, is esteem, yeah. But yeah, some, feel, people just have, some people just have a comfort going up to people. Yeah, yeah, some some, some people, people do. need to tone it down a little bit uh, too. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> Michael Irvin, Adam, yeah. Michael Irvin, Adam, Adam, Michael Irvin. No, <laughs> no, but th it's it's true that it, it's it, and it's also true that you can develop that on your own if you didn't get it at home. This guy had right. some trouble at home. Mm -hmm. Now he's 22. He's out from under his mom's wing. Mm -hmm. He's off at college. Just baby steps. Yeah. Don't worry about yeah. it. You can you yeah. can be you'll be obnoxious in no time. <laughs> Aaron. Right here. You're 21? Yes, sir. What's up? Uh, how are you guys doing tonight? Good. Okay. All right. Uh, first time, or long time listener, first time calling. Great. <clears throat> um, I just uh, wanted to oh. say that uh, mm. I know that you kind of bag on homeschoolers a lot. Well, yeah, um, that's true. I was homeschooled in high school, and I'm doing pretty well right now, uh, career-wise. It happens. So, yeah. <laughs> and I uh, also had a question. Uh, I noticed you haven't been doing the lightning round. Uh, uh, toward the end of, end of the night. Yeah. Aaron, are you high? What, am I high now? No, Aaron. Oh, Aaron. You subject us all oh, to that. I thought they said Adam. Maybe he did say Adam. Maybe I am high. Aaron? Yeah. Hey, I appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, for, first point, uh, homeschooling. Not a big fan of it, but uh, does work on occasion. Sure. Okay, number, uh, number two, uh, lightning round. Yeah, I, I've been sleep deprived lately. Haven't had a lot of energy. And uh, but but we will do it next uh, next show. We don't have a guest, Drew. When is that going to be? Tomorrow, Thursday. Day after tomorrow, yeah. Thursday, lightning round for you, Aaron. Thursday, uh -huh. buddy. Thanks a lot. All right, good times, and uh, you can just uh, listen Thursday night. And Drew, uh, remind me. Oh yeah, <laughs> you, can, you can count on it. Drew doesn't uh, have to say anything. I just yap for uh, twenty minutes straight. I, I want to know why people want to have homeschooling. Why would you want to not go through Ask the them. high school years? I think high school is when you. Just, it's so fun. Aaron? And it's yeah. yeah. Why would you want to be homeschooled? Uh, it was just, uh, I was able to uh, work a full-time job and do school at night, so it was... But you have your whole life to do that and have a job. Don't you want to go to the football game and... Yeah, make well, out and you know. <laughs> Well, I didn't have a problem in that. I still played sports, so... Yeah. How, how did you do that if you weren't going to the high school? Well, in Colorado, you can play sports at any of the, the big uh, high schools. So you would just you would you show up for football practice every day or baseball or whatever? 
Well, I played uh, baseball and basketball, so. Oh, my God. And, and how did you not, did you have a whole social life going also? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Did so you, you, he went to high school without going to classes. Yeah. what he did. Yeah. yeah. How'd you work full time? Uh, I just worked during the day and then did school at night. I know, but and, how'd you do then, basketball? Then, how'd you do basketball and baseball practice every day? When well, you got home, I mean, you'd study. What's that? When you got home after practice, that's when you'd apply yourself. No, I know, but how do you how do you work all day and go to you know basketball practice and baseball well, practice? Mean, it starts at like two. Diploma, so I, I needed to get you, it you done. work from eight to three, practice three to five, homework to five to nine. No, oh, Jesus Christ! So, and now I'm a firefighter, so. No, oh, well, good well. times. You didn't need high yeah, school. This, that is anyway. not the usual homeschool. No, but also, but that is uh, you. You playing high school sports and and being homeschooled from whenever in the evening till uh, whenever uh, Barnaby Jones comes on, <laughs> or whatever the hell you're watching on Nick at Night. The, the point is, is that ain't that. That's right. That's that's playing sports without going to high school. It's it's, it's getting the social and athletic outlet. Don't go to class. That's you. It's you. You went to high school like that. Yeah, that was me. There you just you didn't study in the evening. Yeah, and that's all, all the guys we had bust in, too, yeah. did that, too. <laughs> well, I just hung out, talked about football. All right, let's uh, talk to, uh, how dare you, Drew? Am I, Austin. Am I wrong? Yes. Yeah, I wasn't a great student. Sure, I failed driver's ed, but uh, in biology, and I was a ceramics major and never did take algebra. Carefully, I'm getting very major. impressed. Mm. Never did actually physically claim my diploma because I owed the book room uh, 1995 for We the People which is still, <laughs> I still dispute by the way <laughs> I'm about ready to go, but let me say this about the, the high school diploma, first off big deal, oh I graduated high school, everyone look at me that doesn't do squat for you number two, and I know I'm a little bit unique, but uh, I have never ever had a job where that came up <laughs> it did not come up. And it's sure, I went in a lucrative world of carpet cleaning and then into ditch digging. Well, did you go to college? No. No. And I, I, I probably took a couple classes at junior college, and it wasn't an issue there either. Yeah. I mean, here's, all, here's the other thing, too. And here's the God's honest. And everyone, all you people, just just lie. Just lie. I mean, I, we, I interview people all the time for jobs. And uh, they come in, and they plop their ass on the sofa, and you go, uh, where'd you go to college? And they go, oh, Dartmouth. <laughs> and you go, oh, yeah, all you got, just n f figure the region of the country that the college is in and figure out the name of the football team, and you're done. Everyone's <laughs> out of questions. One out of every thousand guys you run into was an alum or something, and then you're screwed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because then there was like, where'd you study? Oh, we, were you over Kennedy Hall or did you used to work? Mm -hmm. You know, but even then you could probably fake your way through it. But Drew, like, oh, what school did you go to? Where were the Lord Chefs? <laughs> Amherst. Amherst. And it was in... Uh, Masters. Man, Boston. Was yeah. it in Boston? Mm. All right, so you mm. just go, yeah, just go, where'd you... I graduated. Near I did Boston. my undergrad stuff over at Amherst. <laughs> Lord, go, Lord Jeffs. And everyone just sits there and looks impressed, and you move on. No one questions it. No one looks up anyone's records or anything. You just <laughs> lie your way right through all, all interviews. You write whatever you want. Go down to Kinko's, put it on there. You'll never get busted. I mean, look, if you're going out for a job, if you're going for a job, you're, you're going to be a doctor or something, you've got to have some credentials. But if you're just trying to get a job in the industry or computers or something like that, just lie. Say you went to a good college. Pick a small one, though, but a good one. One people have uh, heard of but don't know where it is. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, yeah, I was up... Uh, Swarthmore, Wesleyan. Yeah, I was at uh, Willamette. It's up in uh, Salem, Oregon. People are just sitting there and go, uh, And you go, yeah, strong economics program. That's really why I went. I feel like, okay, you're, I guess you're high. <laughs> That's how it works. Austin? Yeah, what's going on? You're uh, 18. That's right. What's up? Uh, well, what's going on is I just moved to L.A. from San Diego, and I went under, uh, you know, I had a psychiatrist there where I was being treated for ADD and depression because I wasn't doing too well in school. And I learned about that when I was up at Lewis and Clark. Small yeah. school, but very prestigious. <laughs> right. Well, anyway, I had my brain scanned. This thing called spec imaging, but it's a lot of technical crap. Anyway, ultimately ended up I had ADD and I display symptoms of Asperger's disorder on the spec scan. Right. Uh, did you did you suspect that before? Was has anybody brought up that kind of thing? Were well, you? I knew something was wrong because my I, my IQ uh, is like 138. Yeah. And uh, you know my I basically barely graduated high school. I actually convinced them to put me into special ed so I could graduate at the last minute. You have social problems. 
Uh, do I have social problems? Only with uh, girls, and that's why I'm calling. Uh, otherwise, you know, I, I'm a reasonably good-looking guy, and I guess I have a good sense of humor, or so I'm told. Mm. And when I'm talking to girls, I might as well be like Donald Duck speaking Swahili or something. Mm -hmm. It's just not working. Tell you what, Austin, I studied this when I was over at uh, Cal Poly St. Louis Obispo <laughs> before I transferred to Marshall. <laughs> I, uh, we did study this phenomenon. That's good. And that's quite yeah. interesting. Look at a series of spec scans. And series of spec, more than I can count or care to remember, <laughs> quite honestly. Right. Yeah. Well, it, my brain looks something like Swiss cheese. Oh, really? Oh, well, yeah. you will, the, the, not the structurally, but the activity looks like Swiss cheese. Right, right, the blood flow. Yeah, and uh, look, why don't you just define your understanding of Asperger's? Well, um, I mean, my psychiatrist ultimately decided that I didn't have it, but the spec imaging s uh, said that that was a possibility. Did you know go, go that there's a center up there that does, uh, Northern California does a lot of spec stuff on ADD? Which is, right, you know I, that? Almond Clinic is where yeah, I went. Okay, right. And um, ultimately he decided I didn't have it, but I do have some symptoms where uh, right. sometimes it's difficult for me to read how people's mood are in, like, you know, bringing things up in social context and things like that. Right, so Asperger's... Might something inappropriate for the okay. time. The, a, a great way to sort of think of Asperger's is, like, an Asperger... Asperger? Asperger's. Is it? Asperger's. Jesus, be the world's worst chain name, wasn't it? Uh, it's, like, it, it's a variant of autism, interestingly. Right, uh, yeah. Interesting. And, and it... It, like a great way to sort of think of it as somebody with a severe Asperger's would be like an anthrop a Martian anthropologist, like somebody who didn't understand humans, was just dropped here from Mars and was just observing uh -huh. and didn't have a way to process how we interact, uh -huh. how to read emotions on other people, how, mm -hmm. how groups emerge you know, right. sort of spontaneously in their reactions. They, now, can't, they don't process any of that. If, that. if that applies to me, I have a very mild form. Cause, Obviously, uh, like just talking to you can tell yeah. you have nothing much going on. But right. I, I, you know, uh, people like me and I get along. I have a lot of friends, girls and guys. Uh, and just when it comes to dating, I, I've never had a girlfriend or a, any uh, sexual experience like that. Uh, not because I haven't been trying or anything like that. But it just seems that when I when I meet someone, I have difficulty courting them, and I was wondering if it's related. What do you do exactly? What do I do? A little play acting. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. What do you do? What do I do? Yeah. How does it manifest itself? I learned that word manifest itself when I was up at Pacific College, UOP, University of Pacific. Yeah, University of Pacific. Huge sound. Yeah. The one where you got your degree. No, not up. Yeah, the Nigerian nightmare. Uh, Kristen Okoye uh, went to that school. Oh, At least I'll probably remember him mm -hmm. from his uh, Kansas City playing days. Yeah. <sighs> Missed him by one year over there. But <laughs> uh, go ahead. So you're throwing a little specific something like that? Pow. In. Nobody knows anything oh, wait, about the what University does he do? of Pacific. Wait, what do you uh, what, uh, what do? You do? Uh, yeah, what do you do? Ask Life, Lisa. Ask, general? No, no. Yeah, uh, do a little play acting. He, she can, he can ask Lisa. All right. All right. Ask, ask Lisa out on a date. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, okay. What would I do? I'll make you feel better. I'm from San Diego, and I moved to L.A., so we have something in common. Okay. <laughs> well, I didn't have too much luck in San Diego, but... Uh, oh. Oh, thank you. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know. I kind of... What I do is I kind of... Keep going. Go ask her out. Ask, Come on. You just, you just called her up. I yes, just called her out. Yeah. yeah. She doesn't really know you. Yeah. Okay. We've, we've, we've met once kind of or mess. twice. She'd like you to got my number you. somehow. Thought you are cute. Okay. Um, Ring. Hey, listen, it's Austin. I got your number here, and um, I was just wondering if you wanted to go out, and... Well, slow down, slow down, slow down, Austin. Whoa, 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 whoa. Austin, first and foremost, you should have, like, some type of a, a plan of maybe, you know, there's some event or something where a group of friends is... You know, that you're all uh, going to some concert, and you wanted to know if I'd like to go with you. Yeah, oh, that's right. good. Don't give him too much. Stay in character. Okay. Let's go now. <laughs> all right, Austin. Ring. A little small talk first, Austin. Like, hey, hey, hey. You know, Ring. So. Don't say I got your number here. Just say, hey, it's, I, I beat it's Austin. off to the stuff cover. Stop it. <laughs> she knows you have her work. number. <laughs> Stop it. All right, go ahead, Austin. Ring. Uh, hi, Lisa. This is Austin. Hold on. Lisa's got to Lisa's got to pick up the phone. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Ring. Hello. Hi, Lisa. It's Austin. Hi, Austin. How are you? I'm good. Hey, listen. I got a group of friends, uh, and we're going to an event <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> and uh, I was wondering if you'd like to come along. What event are you talking about? Uh, the Oscars. That's not this weekend. <laughs> That's in April, isn't it? Okay, say it was. Come on. All right, all right. Yeah, go ahead. Um, 
Well, with a group? I mean, uh, oh. Do I you know anyone? Am I, am I your date, or is this a, like a group of friends, or, I mean... Well, it's going to be a couple of friends, but I thought uh, I could take you along and get to know you better. You know what? That'd be kind of fun, actually. Okay. I've never, yeah. Great. No, no, it's good. So yeah, that but the, was good. See, but the thing is, though, it wouldn't work that way. But he, well, it would have because he loaded it with the event. It was the Oscar, <laughs> right? He, 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 what, what would you actually be able to ask someone out for? Mm -hmm. Movie? Yeah, something like that. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So well, she I mean, he, I, I, I do go to like premieres of movies and stuff. All right, you got I tons of opportunity, but you need to teach him how to read. The signs. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, yeah, I'm pretty inept when it comes I, to that. I understand. That's the Asperger's quality. So, Adam, go. The stuff when they, when they the, the hand drag, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Um, if if uh, a woman makes, well, he, not over the phone, But, they, but they but do that emotionally, too, you know. Woman, like, yeah. They, they hang with you or they. Well, here's how, as you can tell if a woman is interested in you, you bring stuff up. Like, uh, you go, uh, Mm, what's a what's a new movie that's out right now? You get this uh, Catch Me If You Can with uh, right. Tom Hanks or whatever. You go, geez, I saw a preview of this movie. It looks looks solid. They got four stars in the uh, Los Angeles. Uh, I'll Times. be, I'll be the I don't want to go out with you. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I hate. Oh, I, Tom Hanks. I just I don't like him. Well, you didn't you didn't think he was good in Bosom Buddies? Or, uh, <laughs> I knew that was retarded. Survivor. Or I don't watch TV. Castaway. I don't watch TV. Castaways. Hmm. Is that a restaurant? I don't know. I, anyway, any, I I don't know. I was either going to do that or go mountain bike riding well, this mountain weekend. Bike, I, like, I like mountain biking. You do? Yeah. Yeah. You go much? Yeah. Because I I go up to uh, Box Canyon up here. It's great trails. Put it put the bikes in the back of the that. Ford F one fifty. I don't like no. No, you don't a friend like of mine broke her chain on that, that trail. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Interesting. Well, it was either going to be the movie or it was going to be mountain bike riding. Wh when? This weekend. Oh, this I'm, weekend. I'm leaving the country this weekend. I can't. I can't. Okay. I can't. In, in that case, you don't have to get into the next weekend. Right. That's what I'm saying. Woman likes you. They're interested in you. She would bring up yeah. the next weekend. You're interested would say, in your not stuff. this weekend, but next weekend. It's, it's kind of sad, but women have all the power in yeah. those moments. It's not and sad. They should, they should learn to use it, frankly, right. and they should learn to communicate with the hand more clearly. Yeah. Yeah, but if, listen, Lisa, if, if a guy, if, if you like a guy and he starts talking about a movie he, and you want him to ask you out, you're like... I'll give him the sign. All you got to do is go, I, I haven't seen that movie. I've been wanting to see that movie, too. And that's just wide open now right. for him to go, well, I'm going this weekend. I'm going right. to pick you up, and you're done. But but you don't shun stuff. Like no. If you, if, and as a woman, if you're into a guy, you'll be into stuff that you're not even into. Yeah, it's He's, true. He starts, he starts talking about mountain bike riding, and you'll go, well, I never, like, your brother could have died right. mountain bike riding. And he'd be like, <laughs> I got my dead brother's bike, and I'm thinking <laughs> of selling it. But no, you'll be like, i never been mountain bike riding, but I've always thought it was cool. The guy right. will go, I'll show you how to do it. It's easy. You know, and you're in. There's a fine line where the girl can smell it if you're desperate. So never never show that you're desperate. Never show that you're trying too hard. Just be kind of just so pathetic low and pro. And <laughs> we love the smell of desperation. <laughs> it's, it's, it's easy pickings for us. No, it's true. Is a woman being desperate is that, ever, that no, you were attracted I, to? Is I've that ever factor no, in? Men are like w women when a guy is desperate or down. It's like, fa oh, she doesn't want him. Nobody wants him. I don't want him. But a male is sort of like a lion waiting in the brush with the antelope are going by. Yeah. The ones trailing in the back. All the man's... <laughs> yeah. They get the one that can't keep up. You know what? Uh, there's another suggestion. Sometimes when guys hang around other girls that are just your friends, it makes you more attractive to other women. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. The women, women don't know... Who's attractive and who isn't? They know who's attracted to you and how desperate you seem, and then they'll base it on that. Yeah. Which is just yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Like yeah. if you're Lyle Lovett, the world's most unattractive man, but you can you can uh, bang Julia Roberts for 20 minutes and let the world know, then you get to screw every hot chick now because women are so stupid. They're like Julia Roberts screwed him. I got to screw him too. Forget about the big beak nose and the crazy hair. I'll have sex with him, too. Man would never go for that. No. Like, I, I, if Sean Penn was banging Rosie O'Donnell, be like, good, good luck, buddy. Enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy. How high is this dude? <laughs> and if he left, he'd just leave, and that'd be it. We'd have no interest. Yeah. We're, 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 Women have the power. We're very pragmatic but, but that, that way. But it's pack mentality, too, that they got. But, That's true. And what is attraction? For men, we know what we're attracted to. And for women, it could be one of many, many things. And we'll it's, see. Yeah. 
All right. We'll uh, take ourselves a little break. Lisa Durgan here tonight on the cover stuff, and we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Lisa Durgan is our guest tonight. Lisa's uh, currently on the cover of Stuff Magazine, which is uh, out today. It's a uh, men's magazine. It's a good magazine. Got uh, her uh, more. She can't even fit on the cover, actually. Crapped her shoulder, crapped the top of her head. But all the <laughs> good stuff. the title. All the good stuff is uh, there. Yeah, even blocked uh, the uh, two Fs from stuff. It's like Stew yeah. Magazine. Uh, also uh, is the uh, St. Polly Girl. But is that over with? No, I represent them for a year, so it's what do you actually have to do? just started. You go to go to like tool conventions no. and stuff. No, I actually I already did the hardest part of the job. I already shot everything, and, and now the whole year, my name goes around with uh, St. Polly as representing. They got like a it's, cardboard cut out of you. That put yeah, up at the six liquor foot. Stores. You want one for the the radio room? Yeah. Yeah. Well, not for the radio. Oh, right? oh no, <laughs> he, will, he will desecrate your image. I promise. No. No, I won't. You wouldn't do that. No, there's <laughs> no way I would put a hole in it and uh, take a coffee can and fill it with lard and duct tape it to the back oh of the God. hole. I would never, ever I do that. I think we lost oh, Drew, Drew, please. Oh, my God. I'm saying that's something I wouldn't do. Oh I can't believe you just said that. Oh the visual is not oh yeah. too God. fun. No, that was oh rude. My God. I apologize. Mm -hmm. All right. But I, I would, yeah. Oh, my like God. Those. Don't we have a collar? Yeah, 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 yeah. We got callers, <laughs> but if I get one of those, like uh, overnighted, <laughs> Ryan. Hey, how's it going? Hey, you're thirty. What's up? <laughs> hey, hey, guys. Your, your show is great, Adam. You're hilarious. Great. I just had a question for Lisa. Yes. Do you remember a newspaper called Serendipity? Oh my gosh, my high school paper. It's your high school newspaper. I'm driving down the road. I'm like, Lisa Durgan. <laughs> no way. Yeah, we, we went to high school together. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, you, did you write for the newspaper, Ryan? Well, I did after she left. I was uh, sort of like like junior guy. I think she was a year or two ahead of me. Yeah. And, 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 and Lisa, was, you I wrote for totally the paper? And I did. You I think I think uh, my senior year, yeah, things like when, you know, they're cutting down the caffer trees. Fouching <laughs> friend or foe. Hot issues. No? We never had any pressing issues, but. <laughs> yeah, totally like, what, Ryan? Really, really hot issues, but uh, well, that, that I was does kind of infatuated with Lisa. Oh as my with gosh! With every guy at the high school. <laughs> yeah, you're you're Amazing. one of those. Yeah. Did you play any sports or anything? Um, I played lacrosse, but I think we started that after you left. Lacrosse mm. in a San Diego high school? Yeah, we started. Oh yeah! Wow. Yeah. We never had that in our school. Did that really? The rest of the Rockies, you don't have lacrosse. Really. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah, I yeah. thought you had to be in like Rhode Island or yeah. something to play lacrosse. No. Hi, right, Ryan. So you didn't score. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? I well, know the names of every guy I dated, so I didn't no. date you, Ryan. I was, I was. Uh, let's see, skinny, 130 pounds. Acne, braces, glasses. Oh, yeah. It's all changed, right? Eh? Calling all nerves. Oh, so now I'm, I'm 200 <laughs> with braces and glasses. Great. Oh. That's good. Just all right, Ryan. Hey, good times. All right. Good times, buddy. <laughs> Bye, honey. Yeah, that's good. it's tough writing for the school newspaper because it's like... Uh, like the like oh they want to they want to shift nutrition from uh, ten oh six <laughs> to ten twelve and that's going to interfere with some of the kids' homerooms so we got to write a hard hitting expose on the the nutrition time or something like you don't have anything good to write about right? I swear one of my articles was about cutting the trees down on campus I mean there's nothing yeah nothing hey you can you we can, used to skip class that period you can go on like the sports beat right you mm -hmm. can write about uh, the uh, girls volleyball team going to city this year and that kind of stuff but mm -hmm. if you don't have sports you're kind of screwed we had sports i, I know but you didn't point. you didn't write if you weren't on the sports beat in the school newspaper you didn't you're writing about trees right <laughs> and the school newspaper doesn't seem to cover like the middle east and stuff like that <laughs> does it you never no. seem to a drew school they probably got into that but uh it was pretty apple pie going yeah, my out. school yeah. was my school is like your book committee says that they're gonna need an extra week this year you know it's like <laughs> yeah, all right although i remember your buddy had the alternative newspaper out there oh yes that was very edgy adam yes well, we printed an underground newspaper yeah. at our oh. school our school was so screwed up our school newspaper i only came out with one issue my uh, senior year 
Of the school paper? Or your yeah, the school, the school paper. Yeah. Like, they couldn't get it together. The teacher was a stoner, and he couldn't, couldn't whip everyone into shape. They could never come out with the paper, and we came up with one issue the entire senior year. Like, wouldn't you guys come out with one every couple of weeks or mm -hmm. something? Serendipity. And I was watching that 70s show tonight, and this, all this just takes me back to that whole god-awful oh, yeah. decade. True. Did you write for the school newspaper? No. You didn't write the opera column? No. <laughs> no. No, I, I could see writing sort of a Heloise type column, like the uh, the uh, fork farthest to the right. That's the salad fork. Never put you, you know, like an etiquette sure. etiquette yeah. column. Yeah. No, you didn't do that. I just published a book on it. All right, Matt. <laughs> yeah. You're 22. Yeah. What's up? Well, I went to strip club the other night, and my friend and I were there, and I went with this one stripper and. She gave me a lap dance, okay, but it wasn't your normal one. This one, she uh, started stroking my dick, uh -huh. and then she started giving me light kisses, mm -hmm. and she uh, outside of the pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the the. Well, that's more of a rub than a stroke. It's hard to stroke no, outside. It's, she was she was inside my pants. She got inside out. Oh, and now oh. it comes out. Well, then okay. I say. And then she was saying stuff like. Uh, she was saying, here. Yeah, I, we don't believe you, man. Bogus. No, I'm serious here. All right, now we believe you. <laughs> well, I live in Las Vegas. Why would I not go to a strip club? I mean, come nah. on. Are you going? Yeah. Is he loaded now? Are you drunk? No. All right, Jeep. What's your question? My question is, well, she said. I'd make out with you, but I can't because it's against the rules. <laughs> but I can put my hand on your No, pants. she wanted to. I didn't ask her. Yeah. Okay. And then she said, oh, you know why this room is great? Because me and you are here together. And it's it's just very odd. This was not your normal lap dance because I asked on, my hold friend. Hold on a second. Calling all nerds. I can't believe he's 22. He's not, uh, did she do that thing on your Adam's apple? <laughs> <laughs> the picture's got a huge Adam's apple that she worked like uh, Joe Frazier worked, a speed bag. Uh, I think what Matt is, Matt is trying to explain to us is that he got some action. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm guessing that Matt ain't uh, knee deep in action normally. Matt? Yes. Not, not a ton of ladies coming your way normally? Um... Uh. Not really. Yeah. I'm a, a good-looking guy. Oh, no doubt. I, no doubt. Did I you work out in the gym a lot. I probably got about 16-inch uh, biceps. All right, but still still not a big hit with the ladies normally. Lord well, knows I've you should them. be. You should be. I, yes, I've tried. I've, I've asked them. Everyone I've asked is just they give you the answer. I have a boyfriend. Okay, okay. so so this, but not this That's stripper. The main she, answer I get all the time. She all likes you. Hey, Matt. So I'm trying to figure out whether she liked me or uh -huh. was this her job. Is this how stalkers begin? Yep. Oh, yeah. Matt. Yes. What do you do for work? I work at a 7-Eleven. All right. 7-Eleven. With uh, behind the counter? Or yeah. Doing some just stocking. do everything now. All right. You're the main man over there. And uh, you okay? Uh, ever uh, been on any medications or uh, suffered no, any no. blunt force Not trauma to your head or anything? No. <laughs> no. No one ever uh, whacked you with a snow shovel or anything no, like that? No, none of that. All right, all right. Well, I would suggest going back to this strip club, but it's tough. Like, is it 20 bucks uh, a lap dance? Um, about 30. 30, because that's like 65 hours w worth of 7-Eleven work, you know, after taxes. Yeah. And that, that ain't cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah, all right. Well, why don't you go back and uh, see if you can find her again and uh, see what's happening with her. And let me let me tell you the trick, Matt. Here's how you know a stripper likes you. Okay. She was a vast experience with strippers. Strippers, at least the Vegas strippers, can leave whenever they want. It's the greatest job in the world. It's like... They can they can they can log on to their shift at ten o'clock at night and they can leave at ten forty five or they can leave at five in the morning, whatever it is. You say to a stripper who's giving you a good lamp dance, What time do you get off work? And if she says, I can leave whenever I want, you're in. Because that means she's saying, 
let's go. If she says, my boyfriend picks me up mm-hmm. in his, uh, in mm-hmm. his uh, 350 Ford uh, dually with the, <laughs> with, the, with the lumber and gun rack on it, he, he picks me up after he goes to the range at like 5 in the morning, then you ain't getting anything. Can I ask something? Why, go ahead. Wouldn't it bother you to date a girl that is a stripper? How dare you? I'm sorry. No, not at all. It wouldn't bother you? No, not at all. All right. Because those I mean, are the guys I, that I later on. I've been in Las Vegas my whole life. I mean. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait. So, finish your thought, please. It won't bother me. I mean, uh, all right. later on, it will. Well, yeah. you always see it later on. They always say, well, I don't want you doing it anymore. Right, right, but then they yeah. met the girl at the strip right. club. Yeah. Adam, Hide why would hypocrisy. It, Adam. Hypocrisy. Can you imagine <laughs> a man doing that? Uh, can you imagine that? I could imagine a 28-year-old guy didn't have a lot going on in his life. <laughs> I was topless. Come on, I was a kid. I was 24, 25. Yeah, yeah. No big deal. She didn't stop anyway. Uh, yeah, she stopped stripping. Yeah, as long as she that. told her to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ! I didn't have any money. You know, she made more money than I did. I was getting like eight bucks, nine bucks an hour, swinging a hammer. Oh, life is <sighs> life is cruel, isn't it? Oh. She couldn't get a good gig. She had to work like a receptionist at a place. She was getting like seven bucks an hour, and the taxes were getting taken out. She had to drive into downtown every day, and she'd be mad at me when she got back. Because it used to be three hundred dollars an hour, three hundred cash, and uh, at the beach all day. And now she's uh, fighting, fighting rush hour traffic both ways. Bucks. She's walking. End of the week, you know, two hundred and eighty bucks after taxes. You know, uh, how long did that go on for? Uh. That went on for a uh, number of uh, months, number of months. And then she left. And then she stripped again. Uh, no, she stripped then while she was living with me, uh, I think, for a while. Uh, and then uh, then she uh, got another job. I think she met some dude at that uh, job. And, mm. uh, oh. Bittersweet. Yeah. Kept in contact with my grandmother, though. <laughs> <laughs> Those two kept in touch. <laughs> Actually, when she dumped me, she moved into my grandmother's house. Yeah, Your grandma's nice. always been a big fan of yours. Yeah, it's nice to drive by the grandmother's house yeah, yeah. and see some dude's motorcycle parks in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> Working my girlfriend in my grandmother's bed. Oh my the God. one I used to jump into and eat oh, breakfast sh- with them in the morning. Sh- 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 it's great. Quiet, quiet, quiet. It's great. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm depressed. Then the night you didn't see the bike parked out in front of the house, you'd uh, drive down the street and see it parked around the corner. You know, that's the other move, too. It's like, hey, park it down the block. Oh. Adam doesn't have that kind of range. Oh. He'll never do the math. He'll think uh, he'll think you're in there effing the elderly couple that lives a <laughs> caddy corner to my grandparents. Did you ever run in and ask for your baseball glove back? Or? Oh, it, was just, oh, it was so wrong. Oh, my so God. wrong. So wrong. And then I was living in this uh, apartment in North Hollywood that was like, well, it was a one bedroom, but it had this weird sort of loft on the top. It didn't have a door. It was kind of open, like yeah, this yeah. open loft on top of the staircase. No, no bathroom or anything. Right. And and the rent was like seven fifty a month. And I that was that was the coolest thing in the early eighties, though, right? It was cool, yeah. but then I couldn't make it alone rent wise. Right, right. So I had this string of like vagrant guys come and flop up there for like six weeks at a time. Like <laughs> guys who would show up. Like one guy showed up with a box and had like a windbreaker and two cans. Of Denty more stew in it. He's no. like, yeah, this is my stuff. <laughs> oh, Jesus. These guys would need rides everywhere and stuff. They didn't have wheels, and they'd oh. just flop up there. And you know, My bathroom was in the bedroom. They they didn't have a bathroom they oh. use. And it, I couldn't Those charge the them days. like half. It's just like, give me 180 bucks, dude, and you can stay here for the month. Oh. Times were tough. Oh, I should have killed myself. God. <laughs> I really not regret not killing Multiple myself. Times. Really regret that. All right, let's take a little break. Uh, Lee Durgan here tonight on uh, on the cover of uh, Stuff Magazine, and we'll be right back. Hey, everybody, it's uh, Loveline. I'm Carl. It's uh, Dr. Drew over there. Lee Durgan is our guest tonight on the cover of uh, Stuff Magazine, and... Uh, Say, Polly girl. Hey, one thing, this, uh, this frog's hot. This supposed to drop a trap. You know what I'm saying? I don't know the coffee can discussion we had. The yeah. Last yeah, gonna need six foot cutout. Uh huh. Okay. Richie? 
What's up, man? What's happening? You're 18. How's it going? Adam. Great. Dude, just, up. Uh, just like, first of all, hey, I called in like a while back and I told you about Winter Park, you know, how you guys, ha are, how we have like the biggest fan club for you over here? Yeah. yeah. I don't okay, remember that. Anyway, I have a question for Lisa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you're like really, really hot. Yeah. Oh, my God. So I want to get that ah. coffee can. Hot, dude. Cut it. Yeah. Cut yeah, it. Yeah. Um, I heard something about you having like a like a signing or something going on at uh at Tower Records in Buena Park, like in the next month or something like that. Is that true? That's news to me. That's Lisa That's Guerrero. <laughs> That's different. Really? I don't know. You banger hot, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Hell yeah. Twelve ways to Sunday. <laughs> Adam, Adam, Adam. Do you know what a shocker is, dude? No. What's a shocker? A shocker, dude. Oh man. A soccer. You got to know what a soccer is, dude. It's a roller coaster, uh, but not no, square uh, uh, No, I don't think he had to screw okay, someone in soccer no. or something. I don't know. I love his enthusiasm. What is this? No, I'm just, just, oh, man. This is cool. <laughs> anyway, a soccer. It's like, pretend, okay, uh, you, you, put a, you put up your pinky and you put up your index finger and your middle finger and you hold your... Uh, your other finger, your, your ring finger, with yeah. your thumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And hold it up. Yeah. And just imagine where that goes. Yeah. No? Yeah, all right. Yeah, you got it? Right. I can't <laughs> beat off this way. Are you high? <laughs> you kidding me? He's an idiot. Let's get talking about <laughs> No, no this I wouldn't work. No, I need my thumb. Yeah, I can yeah, use yeah. my thumb. Yeah, I see what he's up to. Uh, oh, uh, oh, okay. oh, 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 oh. Because the girl's shocked that she's actually letting this guy do it. Yeah, yeah. That's a shocker. Yeah. I'm going to give that cut out the shocker. <laughs> Gus? Yeah, I do. Shocker. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, use, break in my shocker form on the, <laughs> on the cardboard cutout. And perfect my technique before I try it on the outside world. Gus, go ahead. You're 19. Man, how you guys doing? Good. What's yeah, up? Questions for Lisa. Mm-hmm. And I have a Las Vegas Golf Magazine, and you're on the cover. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering if you guys would have any uh, charity golf tournaments for the public to play. Uh, uh, after she's done with the signing down at the Point Park Tower <laughs> Records, she's going to organize that. No, I... I sometimes play in tournaments, but they're they're like I, I'm invited. It, it's not a right. public tournament, but um, I play in Vegas a lot. Um, yeah. you're, a, you're a member at uh, the Riviera Country Club, right? Well, I'm not a member, but I feel like a member because I'm always there. Um, my coach is from there, so I'm always on the driving range. Why you you want me to, want me to invite you for a foursome? Is that what you're trying? Well, I would love to play with you. How about a threesome? Be <laughs> yeah. Me, you, and your cutout. <laughs> be great. I give it the shocker. All right, hey guys. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. Right in that school, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, guys. Yeah. Look, hey, you're 19 year old. Your name Gus. Hey, you're not the Sultan you know. of Brunei. What's yeah. that, Gus? He tried. Well, at least he tried. He tried. Oh, yeah. Must be nice, you know. It must be nice to be good. Like I got a couple of sports I'm good at, but they never have any celebrity version of them. Softball, baseball. Yeah, I'm good yeah. at softball and play. But that, yeah. since I got kicked out of the Dodger yeah, yeah. Stadium thing, yeah. it doesn't work. Well, that would happen to you in any sport, though, right? No, I, I get I get asked to play the golf thing, and I'm so lame. That's mm. just it's embarrassing. But, but I would never turn it down. That's why you're asked to play in them because you're the entertainment. You mean my, my lameness out on the on the links yeah. makes for uh, big every, laughs for everybody. Well, yeah. if everybody was good, it wouldn't be so fun, you know. Yeah, there's a but, lot of spectators at these events. Yeah, but there's 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 sort of lame like um, uh, who's the uh, old piano player uh, Victor Borgia Borga Victor Borga. Mm. He was a piano player and he was funny because he was a bad piano player, mm -hmm. but he was really good. Right. There's bad good, and then there's just bad bad. Right. You know, there's thrown off the driving range for shanking them into the tennis court bad. That's me. There's embarrassing bad. You see what I'm well, saying? Why do you Why do you keep going to these? Because they're free, and the booze is good, and, you know, and it's a good time. And then one time, I almost uh, won a Mercedes. Really? Do this, hole in one? Uh, do that hole par in three? one thing. Yeah, it was a par three. It was 200 yards. We're up on a little hill, and... Uh, for some reason, I, I just got like a fairway wood out to uh, tee off with because I didn't want to go with the irons. And uh, I whacked, I guess it was like a five wood mm. and uh, hit a line drive that was going directly at the pin. <laughs> now, it wasn't going to go in, 
But and it, it hit the pin. It was going to hit the pin. Wow. Yeah, but it was like, like someone shot it out of a can. It was like 10 feet off the ground, and it went the entire distance. But I was like, oh, my God, it's going at the pin. And there's this uh, $90,000 Mercedes uh, sitting behind me, and I started to go berserk, and I uh, naturally <laughs> shot right past the pin and uh, went, in, went into the bunker. So you've never had a hole in one? No. 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 I'm guessing you have? No, uh -huh. actually. Uh -huh. I've been about six inches away from a hole in one but that's about as close mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how many yards away <laughs> six inches yeah but how many yards oh it was par three mm -hmm. i'd say it was about 175 175 mm -hmm. what were you hitting off the tee i actually used a uh, seven wood seven what a girl it's you a, know a, i sometimes go for the woods i see i didn't even know there was a seven wood yeah, there is yeah. High, high. It goes high and long. Um, that's not. Do most guys have that in their bags. No the guy wood? grabs the seven wood. Aha! Uh -huh. All right. Well, I knew I didn't know it for a reason. Otherwise, yeah. I should probably learn how to hit it. Uh, Hi, Drew. Yeah. Huh? Good. I'm listening. All right. We'll be back. There's the show. I want to thank uh, Lisa Durgan for coming in here and being such a delight. Thank Putting up you. with Drew's nonsense with the coffee can and the cutout and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Oh, my God, Anna. That's <sighs> where we got talk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cover stuff in uh, Fox Sports Net and uh, St. Polly Girl, and uh, it's all good. Look for her uh, on a uh, course near you. Thanks, good, uh, guys. Nice meeting you. Nice to meet you, too. So until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. I'll trust you a little bit. No. Yeah. No, it's not that. It's just, that. You just, just suck up some helium or something? What was I that? Just, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Ingle. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.